Okay guys, so today we're finally be looking at one of my first real fishing videos on the channel. Now I do want to apologize, I had intentions to do a lot more fishing videos, but like anything when it comes to my channel, I don't want to just throw something together kind of half-baked or cobbled together. I try to go out and get a large portion of my own personal experiences before launching into videos talking about my setups, what I use. I want to make sure that what I'm actually using is actually effective. So with that out of the way, let's jump into my fly fishing setups. And I did say setups. Okay, so I have, so the reason why I said setups is I technically have two kind of fly fishing setups. And this is my secondary one and this is my primary one and we will be digging into both of them as well as the flies i use and have found success with here in just a little bit now to start off we're going to look over my secondary as i'm sure you guys really want to look at the primary but we'll save that for just a little bit later so to get keep this pretty cut and dry and to keep this pretty straightforward my secondary, the reason why I have a secondary is one, I was actually gifted a rod and reel setup in addition to the rod and reel that I had already bought. And in addition to that, I also like to have a secondary on hand in case anything happens to my primary or if someone wants to tag along with me and you know, I just so happen to have a second set or a second setup that they can use. So to, so let's jump into what this is exactly. So to start off, this rod that the reel is sitting on is a Cortland 15021. It's a really weird name, but that's how Cortland calls this. It is a vintage fly rod and it is a seven weight. It's a pretty good fly rod from what I can tell for, you know, moderate sized, um, moderate sized things like rainbow trout and things like grayling. It's a pretty good rod for those. This is an eight and a half foot rod, so it's semi-compact. I wouldn't call it a really lightweight or compact rod by any means, but it's a nice budget rod. And this was the first rod I got for fly fishing and it works very well. It works just like you'd expect it to. Now, what sits on this is just a standard Cabela's. Uh, this is a uh, what they call a 567D by Cabela's and it's a pretty good rod there's really er, rod it's a pretty good reel there's really nothing that I have against it once again I've used it a little bit with this setup works just fine it is a little bit loud as you guys can probably hear but it's a pretty good rod it has an okay drag that's probably the only thing I don't like about it is the drag could definitely be a lot harder and a lot better but it is what it is now the primary setup is the one that's a little bit better obviously and the one that i use regardless when i'm going out this is the rod setup that i start off with and use so to start off with the rod itself this is a cabela's uh, fish eagle pt yeah fish eagle pt it's a nine foot rod and it is a six weight so this rod is a little bit more delicate the reason why i like that six weight over the seven weight is they're really close in actual like what you can catch for size of the fish and what i found with this six weight is it's just a little bit more fine so what this means is when you're casting because fly fly fishing is such a different cast than something like a spinning reel or a bait caster kind of rod uh there there's definitely a lot of it's certainly better at least in my experience when you have a very fine tip and a lot of control over your cast and your line so i like that thinner uh, tip and that thinner size overall for that reason i also like it because especially when you're trying to fly fish things like rainbow trout and arctic grayling you know these aren't big fish so it can be kind of hard to tell when they actually hook up onto your fly because sometimes your fly can be kind of hard to see so you can't always tell when a fish has snapped it especially if you're using something like a nymph pattern or a merging pattern that sits you know just below the surface so you can't really see it or see if a fish has taken it however however if you do have something really fine like this you know your rod's gonna react more to the slightest little nudges even very slight nudges it will react to and you can say oh hey i got a fish you know on the rod or on the line i should say 
So that's what I like a lot about having this little bit finer rod, especially with the length being nine feet, makes for a very nice, very precise rod that like I said, has a really good feel to it. And it also helps with the cast. So anyways, that is the uh, rod itself. And on it is a Maxon Outfitters Max 3. And I really like this reel because it's very open and it's also insanely smooth when it's going out and when it's coming back in, it is just buttery smooth. And one thing I like is, as you guys can probably hear, or maybe you can't hear, the uh, the reel is just super quiet. I just totally messed that up, but it's a super quiet reel and uh, it doesn't make a lot of noise, which is something I like because so many of these different fly reels, like that secondary one I have, they make a whole bunch of noise. And when I'm out there fly fishing and stuff, I, I want to enjoy the peace and the quiet and the tranquility around me, not hear this, you know, like creaking sound every time I'm reeling to or fro or like when I'm casting it out, pulling the line out or when I'm reeling it in. I just hate hearing that sound. So I really like how quiet this reel is. As well, it is nice that a lot of different reels seem to be built with a lot of plastic, which doesn't seem to be a huge issue, but I like the fact that this is an all CNC billet aluminum uh, reel, so it's really strong, no concerns about it breaking. The last thing I love about this Maxon reel is um, the fact that it's drag is just awesome i mean you can set drag and really set this thing so that if a fish is pulling on it good you know if you catch something like a good sized trout or a good sized uh, grayling probably a good sized trout's more realistic but if you catch a good sized trout you know and it's pulling you can set this drag really tight and it will just not let that reel go forward. So I love the, the drag that you can set for this reel because it, unlike the uh, Cabela's reel that I was uh, talking about just a second ago, this one has a way better drag to it. So, plus it just looks pretty awesome. So that is my primary setup of what I use and hopefully I'm gonna roll in some pictures and actual fishing uh, for grayling using this setup. Okay guys, so changing the angle just a little bit here, we're going to be taking a look at my flies. Now like I said, this kit is nothing super impressive, as you guys can see there. I don't have a whole lot, but really for me, uh, I take the same kind of stance with fly fishing as I do with um, just normal like spinning, or spinning or bait caster kind of fishing, and that is that once I find a setup, I may get a couple of the same thing, but generally I get just like one of something, and I find out that it works, and I just use that one thing, so that's kind of what I've done here, and admittedly, I haven't gone through this passel of uh, all of these flies to actually test what I like the most, however, I can say the one that I have used to great effect out of all of these is this little guy right here. Now this as I'm going to try to show you guys, is a mosquito pattern or a moth pattern. And it's going to be a little bit tricky to show you because it is very tiny. Because with the with fly fishing, the premise is much different. You want these really tiny little hooks and really tiny little flies so that they look realistic. And so, yeah, this is what I use. And I've caught just a bunch of grayling on this little guy right here because they just seem to snap it up. And how I present this, because... How I found fly fishing to be a little bit different than other forms of fishing is unlike just, you know, throwing something out there and making it, you know, wiggle around and move around. You want to actually kind of set up almost like a scene and, you know, create something that looks very realistic to the fish that you're trying to get. So how I like to throw this out there or present it to the fish that I'm trying to catch is that I basically just throw it out there, let it kind of sit on the surface a little bit and I found that especially grayling snap this thing every time right when it falls below the surface. So essentially, and I conveniently don't have it right now, but this is technically a dry fly. So I put just a little bit of aquaphobic treatment on this uh, fly to keep it from just going directly underwater and sinking to the bottom, but not so much that it won't sink at certain points. So that's what I like to do with this fly in particular, because like I said, uh, things like grayling tend to be a very suspicious or leery fish, and they don't like to snap at things on the surface most of the time, so they feel more comfortable being underwater. So that's how I present this, is I let it just fall underwater just a little bit, and they feel more comfortable about grabbing it. Now another thing I do want to say about fly fishing, 
if this guy is still in focus here, is that another thing I was told on YouTube, which you can never quite trust everything you see or hear on YouTube or the internet in general, is that with fly fishing, you want to try to set the hook immediately. And I've definitely found that to not be the case. When I went fly fishing, I first tried that so that every time a grayling or any fish would bite, I would just try to set the hook. But usually, uh, that will almost always pull it right out of the fish's mouth. So what my personal experience has been as well is using this fly is to just let that fish grab the hook or grab the fly really and run with it. And then when you know you have a fish on your line or if they've ran off with your fly and hook, I kind of like to just kind of pull up into the side. It's kind of a hard motion to show exactly. Hopefully some of the footage shows it, but I pull just up into the side and that almost always hooks them right in the corner of their mouth. And like I said, I've had really good success with that, but you want to make sure the biggest thing is when you fly fish, let that fish run off with the hook and the fly. Let them make them think that, you know, they've gotten that in the bag and they got a free meal. And then, you know, like I said, when you know you have the fish, then kind of, that's when I like to kind of set it. But once again, especially with smaller fish like trouts and like graylings, you don't want to set your hook too hard because you stand a really large chance of just pulling it straight out of their mouth. Anyways, guys, this is what the flies look like so far that I use. Now, in Alaska, this is at least from what I've been told and from most of my experience, you tend to want to gravitate more toward darker patterns and not flashy, bright stuff like your pinks, your chartreuse, your, you know, oranges. Those don't tend to be very effective fly colors. Those can be effective colors when you're doing, a, you know, more conventional fishing, but when you're doing fishing for with flies you want to use and stick to darker colors like these so that's what i found success with and from what i've been told so hopefully you guys have enjoyed this like i said those are the flies that i use and the fly rods and reels that i use so hopefully you've enjoyed this and as always guys god bless and i'm out